The Honourable Datuk Sri Setia Awang Haji Hamza bin Haji Sulaiman, Minister of Education, Brunei Darul Salam, Ms. Haslina Tayyip, the CEO of Dynamic Technologies and Chair of the ASEAN Business and Investment Roundtables and the ASEAN Business and Investment Summit 2021. The Honourable Yanti Rahman, Chair of the ASEAN Business Advisory Council 2021. Haji Musa Adinen, Chairman of the ASEAN Business Awards. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen and all of our guests who join us from across the Southeast Asian region and beyond, a very warm welcome to our roundtable on skills for a digital age. Now, this is part of a series of events under Brunei's chairmanship of ASEAN 2021, hosted by the ASEAN Business Advisory Council. I'm Jenny Mara Ali, delighted to be your virtual host for today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this roundtable will be made up of three sessions. We have our opening session, which will include a keynote address by the Honorable Minister of Education, Unai Darussalam. And that's followed by two panel discussions on the future of work and skills for a digital age. So with that, it's my pleasure to now hand over to Ms. Haslina Tayyip, CEO, Dynamic Technologies, and the chair of this morning's roundtable. Haslina. Thank you, Jenny. Good afternoon. Yang Burhormat Datuk Sri Stia Awang Hamza bin Sulayan, Minister of Education. His Excellency Sadvinder Singh, Deputy Secretary General for the ASEAN Economic Community, Haja Farida Datuk Sri Paduka Haji Talib, Managing Director and CEO of Brunei LNG, Deputy Ministers, Permanent Secretaries, Deputy Permanent Secretaries, Your Excellencies, esteemed Joint Business Council members, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us today. It is with great honor and privilege that I welcome you to our second virtual roundtable on skills for a digital age. As part of our series leading up to the ASEAN Business and Investment Summit, which will take place on the 25th of October next month. Before we begin, on behalf of the ASEAN Business Advisory Council, I would like to take this opportunity to express my deepest gratitude to our lead partners, Brunei LNG, and Bank Islam Brunei Darussalam. And to our other sponsors, Brunei Shell Petroleum, Baiduri Bank, Standard Chartered Bank, Brunei Gas Carrier, Mitsubishi, SAP Southeast Asia, the Hong Kong and Shanghai Bank, and Zulik Pharma. We thank you for your continuous support in sponsoring our prestigious events. COVID-19 has presented us with great challenges in the future of work and transformed the way we work it has accelerated a new age of digital transformation and changes in innovation. We understand changes that have taken place may threaten livelihoods and job securities of the people. When we first designed this round table, when we think about how, how it means to skilling up ASEAN against COVID-19 backdrop, we put in a lot of thoughts on the translation of the current workforce skills into the digital world. We ask, what can be automated? What can be done innovatively with the latest technology? What would we need to remain agile and stay competitive in the rapidly changing world? We recognize that as ASEAN, we have the capacity to grow together, share skills, tools and framework and push to be successful beyond our borders. In this digital world, as the nature of business and employment continues to evolve, our collaborative efforts and working together, Sama Sama, has become even more important to the region and our respective economies. As such, in this round table, we hope that it will provide an understanding in the changing nature of the future of work, identify potential skills to develop, explore the different strategies for the new post-COVID working environment and the skills gap for digital ASEAN. At the beginning of the pandemic in March 2020, Gartner survey of 317 CFO and finance leaders estimated that 74% will move at least 5% and 25% will move at least 20% of their previously on-site workforce to permanently remote. It is important in our multicultural ASEAN community to address cultural impact of emerging skills to do this. 
cultural intelligence plays a big role in transformation as it is one of the motivation of workers and an organization's collective identity. In this regard, it is imperative that we work with leaders in adapting and transitioning working communities into digital workspaces. The adoption of workspaces have magnified the skill gaps between generations of employees with different infrastructures, both within and across different markets. New technology advancements, such as AI, machine learning, cybersecurity and blockchain, all present great potential for change and are some of the catalysts needed in this fourth industrial revolution. But we must ensure inclusivity. As technology advancement continuously change, staying relevant in this digital age means lifelong digital learning are even more important. With digital transformation and digital ways of working together, our world become borderless. Some are capable in operating from across the planet using templates, tools, and methodology. Some organization and individuals strive to standardize and regulate working collaboratively. ASEAN Business Council promotes business mentorships and collaboration on platforms. We share, grow together, summer, summer, in the quest of an inclusive ASEAN. As COVID-19 pandemic and restrictions to cross-border travels continue, it accelerates the need for regional reskilling, building an inclusive ecosystem to equip and upskill both ASEAN public and private sectors. This is an insight to the Brunei Legacy Project, harnessing impact with resilient employability digitally or known as, in short, as hired. The future is not only investing in technologies, the future is investing in our people. I look forward to an insightful discussion this afternoon. Thank you very much. Back to you, Jenny. Haslina, thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, shortly we'll be inviting Haja Farida, Dato Sipaduka, Haji Taleb, the Managing Director and the CEO of Brunei LNG for her special remarks. But before that, we do have a short video from BLNG to enjoy. With that, we now hand over to Haja Farida to deliver the special remarks on behalf of BLNG, one of our lead partners. Haja Farida. Thank you, Jenny. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Yang berhormat Dato Suri Setia Awang Haji Hamza bin Haji Sulaiman, Minister of Ed Education of Brunei Darussalam. Your Excellencies, Yang Mulia Deputy Ministers, Yang berhormat Siti Rosai Mariamanti, Dr. Sri Leila Jasa Rahman, Legislative Council Member and Chair of the ASEAN Brunei Business Advisory Council. Um, Yamulia Haslina Taib, uh, Chair of the ASEAN Business and Investment Roundtable on Skills for Digital Age. Yamulia Haji Busa, Admin Chair of the ASEAN Business Awards. Panel speakers, ladies and gentlemen, Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. A very good afternoon and salam sejahtera. I am delighted to be back in this series of ASEAN Back events which are happening this year under the Brunei Jerusalem ASEAN Chairmanship. This year's theme of building our sustainable digital future goes together with this event on the development of digital skills and the efforts that's being explored in Brunei, Brunei LNG such as data digitalization and our journey towards a more sustainable future. It is also truly an honor for me to be here today on behalf of Brunei LNG delivering this special address virtually to all of you 
and especially as we are also the joint lead sponsor for the roundtable, we see great value in supporting platforms like this. Not only does it help us to grow as a business, it also reaffirms uh, our commitment to the nation as a key contributor in achieving Brunei Darussalam's Wawasan 2035 goals towards a dynamic and sustainable economy and smart nation. It also affirms our commitment to ASEAN as an industry leader in preparing for future opportunities and challenges and prospering together in a unified region. And last but not least, of course, it also affirms our commitment globally as an energy provider in providing sustainable energy solutions to our customers overseas. As the longest running LNG plant in the world, innovation and utilization is and always has been a core part of our operations. It is not something we've only just started. It is something we've been consistently working and improving on throughout the years. Our investment and commitment in digitalization is to simplify our processes across the value chain. And we do so by working closely together with industry leaders. In our digitalization journey, we are progressing to create a digital twin of our existing assets, enabling an interactive workplace version for monitoring and improving our energy efficiency, for learning, for maintenance, and also emergency response. We are also investing in capabilities and tools that allows execution of technical activities in parallel with online connection of engineers and specialists from worldwide locations, enabling them to participate in repair operations virtually. So digital skills are not new and have always been important. In fact, it is nothing more than an era appropriate term for innovative ways of working, new ways of working. And you may know that around 60% of all occupations today are currently have at least 30% of work tasks and activities that could be automated. However, it's important to note that tools and technology such as automation are not possible without humans, capable humans who continue to adapt, get new skills through training and credentials is what the industry needs. Digital skills without analytical skills, creative skills and human skills will not prepare any generation, whether young or old, to interact with machines. We need the balance of all skills. That is the best way to prepare for the constant changes in our environment, combining digital technology, people and business strategy. We need to realize that digital skills are no longer centered around just IT or those who look after IT in an organization. Rather, it has become one of those skills that is embedded across the breadth of any digital aspiring organization. Across the globe, more than eight in 10 middle skills uh, jobs, which is about 82%, requires digital skills, a 4% increase since 2014. So technology is changing at a rapid rate. So digital skills and capabilities will continue to grow in importance. And the best way we can prepare for these changes in skills is to be flexible and open to growth and adaptation in this space. Digital transformation is a journey and not a destination. Digitalization is a moving target that is constantly evolving and needs steady evaluation and updating to remain viable as, a, as part of a business strategy. So in the energy industry, digital is one of the five mega trends reshaping the industry, uh, industry today. So availability of technology, data, and capabilities is growing at an exponential rate. Technology has become faster and cheaper over the last 10 years. And 10 years ago, the cost of bandwidth was 40 times more expensive cost per megabyte of cloud infrastructure was 20 times more expensive, and the cost of processing power was actually 50 times more expensive. So technology is not only improving people's lives, but it's also making work easier and more efficient, efficient in many sectors. So there are a multitude of opportunities that have emerged as part of Brunei Energy's digital transformation journey, especially with COVID-19 and the new ways of working. It has encouraged us as an organization to think outside the box encouraged us to use artificial intelligence to improve our reliability and maintenance predictions and made us think of how to enable remote operations whilst enhancing productivity. And you may recall seeing in the earlier um, video that we are actually a 52 year old plant, one of the longest running plant globally. So we've always had to have a very classical way of being hands on or being physically present to turn a valve or fix a leak. But now with COVID-19, it's more of a challenge around how can we do this remotely. So digitalization is all about the data and the people. So for us at Brunei LNG, the main opportunity with this journey is to actively invest in building this digital capability for the organization. 
upskilling our local Benayans to be digitally savvy and digitally, digitally literate, creating a highly skilled workforce ready for the future of work. Digital technology, technologies will allow our energy to thrive through the transition to lower carbon energy, for instance, as it will help us to monitor and improve our energy efficiency. So in summary, the key to success for any digitalization transformation journey is the human element. Investing in the human side of digitalization will ensure sustainable change and long-term value. Thank you everyone for listening. I look forward to hearing the different perspectives from across ASEAN and participating in today's roundtable discussions. Farida, thank you so much. Haja Farida from BLNG. Ladies and gentlemen, with that, it's my pleasure to now welcome the Honourable Datuk Sri Satya Awang Haji Hamza bin Haji Sulaiman for the opening keynote address. Now, the address today has been recorded. The Honourable Minister couldn't be with us in real time, but recognising the importance of the issues, he wanted to still deliver the opening keynote and show his support for the discussions. Our Minister. Yang berhormat, yang berhormat Dayang Siti, Siti. Rozai Marianti, Datuk Seri Laila Jasa, Haji Abdul Rahman, Chair of the ASEAN Business Advisory Council 2021, Yang Mulia Dayang Haslina Haji Taib, Chair of ASEAN Business and Investment Summit 2021, Yang Mulia Awang Haji Musa Haji Adinin, Chair of ASEAN Business Awards 2021, Distinguished Guests, Ladies and Gentlemen, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And a very good afternoon from Brunei Darussalam. First of all, I would like to thank the ASEAN Business Advisory Council, the Brunei Chairs 2021, partners, sponsors, as well as to everyone involved in convening this event. I'm pleased to take part in this remarkable event today in substantiating the importance of education in developing the right skills for the digital age. I hope the discussion that is to be held today will set the wheels in motion to strengthen collaborations and partnership, be it between educational institutions and business enterprises, public and private sectors, or young and all alike, with the aim of having a better understanding of the changing nature of education and the future of work. I'm also delighted to learn that ASEAN Business Advisory Council under the Brunei Darussalam Chairmanship 2021 will be initiating a legacy project titled Harnessing Impact with Resilient Employability Digitally, or in short, HIRED, which aims to address the shift of digital technology in strengthening the capacity of workforce in ASEAN, where they will be prepared with skills that are fit for the industry working in the digital era. Ladies and gentlemen, equipping the society for a digital future relies on the development of younger generation with relevant skills and knowledge in this digital era. Has technology is just the enabler it is crucial that our society, in particular our students, are well equipped with the relevant 21st century skills, knowledge and competency required by a digital native student that is by focusing on the six C's which are critical thinking, collaboration, communication, creativity, cultural awareness and character education. These six C's serve as the foundation to enable us to respond to the needs of the fourth industrial revolution and society 5.0, where the demand for technological, social, and emotional and higher connective skills will grow. As such, the 21st century skills is now becoming as important as literacy and numeracy. Development of these soft skills should start from primary and secondary schools, where agility in learning personalization, interpersonal, and the use of education technology are crucial for students to become better innovators, creators, adapters, and independent lifelong learners. In the ASEAN Work Plan on Education 2021 to 2025, therefore, we are emphasizing on the promotion of the 21st century skills 
as we work towards enhancing the skills, sets, and competencies and knowledge of our ASEAN students. Ladies and gentlemen, with such skills expected to be taught in our school, it is therefore imperative for our educators to be trained with the right digital and 21st century pedagogical competencies for them to be able to deliver these skills and knowledge. I believe it is imperative for us to prepare our teachers to be digital ready and have the adaptability, literacy and competency to teach 21st century skill and knowledge to our students. On this note, I'm delighted to share that under the ASEAN Plus 3 Plan of Action on Education 2018 to 2025, our Ministry of Education is currently working with South Korea on developing professional development courses for teachers on 21st century skills. This signifies our commitment towards the development of human resources at the national as well as the ASEAN level as we believe that engagements at regional and international level could serve as a driving force for a continuous progress in human resource development. At the higher education level, a lot of efforts are being directed to prepare and provide educational programs that would be relevant and needed to prepare our students for the fourth industrial revolution era. Programs such as data analytics, artificial intelligence, robotic, and others are designed to meet the growing demand of various industries and services. This program can be for skilling, upskilling, or reskilling of our human capital in the digital era. Ladies and gentlemen, in light of the recent global crisis of COVID-19 pandemic, the use of digital technologies has now shifted tremendously, and the demand for digital skills has surged, more so in some sectors. However, this dramatic increase in innovation and adoption of digital solution should not take place at the expense of ethical considerations. With the ongoing moral and public debates evolving the use of technologies such as artificial intelligence and data analytics in our daily activities, matters such as liability, accountability, privacy, property, autonomy, amongst which conveys adverse insinuation such as on automatic data collection, algorithms used for predicting and profiling technologies, used for surveillance has become a major public concern. Therefore, with this in mind, a holistic approach should be taken to ensure the right ethical and moral principles are instilled to our students at all levels of education. In a time where we are less clear about the specific skills tomorrow's worker will require, digital ethics and values become our guiding principle in order to develop and implement digital technologies in a responsible manner. In the context of Brunei Darussalam, these values and principles are embedded in our Malay Islamic monarchy philosophy. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope what I have shared here would serve as a foundation for participants to further deliberate during this afternoon session. I believe with strong commitment and enhanced collaboration among various stakeholders, we can strive together to achieve better towards preparing and providing relevant skills, knowledge and competencies for the society in our quest for prosperity and sustainability in a digital era. Finally, I wish to congratulate ASEAN Business Advisory Council, Brunei, in spearheading this important event and express our appreciation for having us to be a part of this important affair. The Ministry of Education of Brunei Darussalam hopes to further strengthen our alliances and welcomes potential cooperation that will mutually benefit all parties in building resilient and sustainable future for ASEAN and work in this digital era. Thank you, stay safe, and take care. Thank you so much to our Honourable Minister of Education, 
Brunei Darussalam. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, we now call upon the Honorable Yanti Rahman, the chair of the ASEAN Business Advisory Council, to now launch Brunei's legacy project, Hired. Thank you so much, Jenny, and a very good afternoon and salam sejahtera to all. Honorable Datu Suri Setia Haji Hamza bin Haji Sulaiman, Minister of Education of Brunei Darussalam, Haslina Taib, Chair of ASEAN Business Investment Summit, Musa Adnin, Chair of ASEAN Business Awards, Haja Farida Datu Suri Paduka Haji Talib, Managing Director and CEO of Brunei LNG, our lead partner. His Excellency Sadvinder Singh, Deputy Sakjan for the ASEAN Economic Community, Mark Garnier, MP, Prime Minister's Trade Envoy to Brunei, Myanmar and Thailand. It's definitely good to see everyone again. Excellencies, Deputy Ministers, leaders of businesses in ASEAN and beyond, academia, trainers, employers, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Before I begin, we are incredibly grateful to have Honorable Datu Haji Hamza, Brunei Minister of Education, present virtually with us here today, and we would like to express our sincerest appreciation for his support and encouragement in taking part of today's roundtable and delivering the keynote address. We would also like to express our gratitude to Haja Farida, the MD and CEO of BLNG, our lead partner in sharing her remarks earlier and not forgetting the government officials, leaders of businesses and our respective panelists, moderators, thank you for your valuable time to be here with us today. Digital transformation has always been at the forefront of the agenda, even before the current pandemic. However, COVID-19 has speeded up the adoption of digital technologies and many of these changes could be here for the long haul. It can support us to emerge stronger towards the post-pandemic recovery, but only if we are prepared. Technology and continuously advanced and rapidly changing the landscape of work in the region and leaving us with no choice but to upskill and reskill in order to adapt and accommodate the changes in the industry skills requirements. And in a nutshell, this is what ASEAN Back Brunei Legacy Project is all about. We named this legacy project HIRED, H-I-R-E-D, means harnessing impact with resilient employability digitally. HIRED was built upon to address the issue of unemployment and also on ASEAN facing that it lags behind in the reskilling and upskilling of its workforce. This has become even more so critical and timely now to the impact of pandemic as we hope to achieve the United Nations SDGs, particularly on goal number four, on quality education and goal number eight, on decent work and economic growth. This legacy project is also guided by the third pillar of the ASEAN Economic Community on Equitable Economic Development and ASEAN Back Report on two to five recommendations of a pathway towards recovery framework and hope in ASEAN in support of the ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework, which upskilling and reskilling is reflected under the second broad strategy on strengthening human security and also aligning with the Brunei Chairmanship Priority Economic Deliverables under the second strategic trust on digitalization. At the end of the day, what truly really matters is the purpose of what we are doing for this project is that we are able to provide opportunities for the needs of the people not just in Brunei, but also in the ASEAN region to gain the relevant skills that they fail to reach, receive in reaching to their full potential productivity to become employable and relevant to today's industry. Upskilling and reskilling are not just looking towards the graduate youth, but also the existing workforce, where the older employees today struggling and faces greater job insecurity, which require them to upskill and reskill to adapt to this technology-driven world of work. As Brunei aspires towards an educated, highly skilled and accomplished nation, of obtaining skills development through training is an essential component. And this is just as important to education, which was highlighted earlier by Honorable Datu Hamza. And in the long-term institutions may have to revisit the existing education system and enhance 
with incorporating skills to gain practical experiences in ensuring a future ready workforce. Now, it has truly been a remarkable journey, and it is with honor that I stand here today with at this momentous milestone of hired along with the team consisting of our knowledge partners and collaborators that made this happen. I still can't believe it has been almost a year that we have embarked this journey from seeing this project at its infant stage, then undertook information campaign through various engagements with our business councils, joint business councils and knowledge partners to raise awareness of hired and officially taking off today. So without further ado, please join me in officially launching Hired. Thank you. The fourth industrial revolution has ushered in an era of sophisticated technology, innovation and ideation meant to truly revolutionize the future. ASEAN should be a part of this revolution. According to the World Bank, a child born in ASEAN today will only achieve 59% of their full potential productivity, partly due to the lack of relevant skills that they fail to receive. COVID-19 has caused more than 30 million people in ASEAN to become unemployed. The pandemic has accelerated the need to be digitally literate and resilient as the future of work requires specific skill sets. Aligned with the digital transformation the world is seeing now. We need to address the skill gaps in the ASEAN region and encourage the available workforce to embrace digitalization. Hired, an ASEAN backed Brunei's legacy project understands the importance of investing in reskilling and upskilling the workforce to adapt to a modern, technology-driven world. Hired aims to provide online training and mentorship to the young, unemployed and current workforce of ASEAN by harnessing existing initiatives and partnerships to support access to digital skills. Collaborating with employers and organizations on training and mentorship to enhance employability and strengthen ASEAN workforce. The key to a stronger human capital in ASEAN is by staying relevant and providing opportunities to mentor and train the people to achieve their fullest potential. Hired provides ASEAN workforce with quality work opportunities accessed remotely promoting doing business across ASEAN and beyond. This legacy project is critical to ASEAN's sustainable future. Thus, we shall rope the strength of our businesses, knowledge partners, key industry champions, trainers, employers and institutions as ASEAN one community. And we are indeed the ASEAN legacy. So join us. Together, we can collectively recover stronger and build a resilient workforce for a sustainable ASEAN digital future. Sama Sama. Thank you so much, Honorable Yanti. Hyatt is now officially launched. Ladies and gentlemen, as we now transition to our next session and bring our speakers onto our virtual stage, we do have a short message, once again from our primary lead partners, BLNG, followed by Baiduri Bank, one of our platinum sponsors. What does the future hold, wherever you look from whichever walk of life, 
We know there is great potential within, just waiting to be unlocked. For every milestone in your life, no matter how big or small, Baiduri is with you, enriching your life at every stage. For every business ambition, no dream is too big and no challenge is too great. Baiduri is with your business, empowering success every step of the way with our global outlook and deep local insights. As your financial partner, we believe in truly understanding your needs. We engage through meaningful experiences with you in mind as we build lifelong relationships. This is what co-creation means to us. Enriching, empowering, and engaging the communities we serve for over two decades. Together, our journey continues as we evolve, turning dreams into reality, uncovering new possibilities in a changing world. This is who we are. By Dury Bank, co-creating your future.